opening ceremony to begin. Again, this is at Stanfield International Airport in Halifax. And as we can see, an honor guard ready to greet her as she comes off the plane. With that, we want to now go to Elizabeth Chu because as the procession makes its way through Halifax, she is right now along one of the routes that the procession will be passing. Elizabeth, hello. Almond Street in North End Halifax where the funeral procession will be winding its way through this neighborhood. This is the neighborhood where Captain Jen Casey grew up, where she made so many lasting friendships and where she developed her thirst for adventure. This funeral procession will be bringing Captain Jen Casey home. Now, as you can see behind me, there is a, a serviceman, a, a naval seaman with the Navy. He he is um, wearing a black mask, uh, of course, because we are in a pandemic and that has made it so very difficult for Nova Scotians, for uh, everybody to grieve. But uh, people are being asked to line this procession route and stay socially distanced, stay, stay six feet apart as they pay respects to Captain Casey. The funeral procession will be winding its way down this street because her childhood home was here on Almond Street. The funeral procession will then make its way past her school, Highland Park, where her friends from childhood are deeply hurt, her Highland Park crew, as they were called. The procession will also pass uh, the radio station where she worked, News 95.7. It's only a few blocks away from here. Captain Casey was a journalist before she became a public affairs officer with the Snowbirds. People are asked to line this uh, route and perhaps wear red and white, the colors of the snowbird if snowbirds if they wish and the defense minister and the governor general will be part of the funeral procession joining captain casey's parents her grandparents and her partner and fellow snowbird scott boyd who are in deep mourning uh, michael this is a town in in deep sorrow today and how are people along the route remembering captain casey elizabeth have you had a chance to speak with many yet Yes, I have been, and people are intending to line this procession to this procession route to pay tribute to Captain Casey. And I want to introduce you now to a, a woman who lives on the street. Her name is Paula Richard, and she wants to pay tribute to Captain Casey. Hello, Paula. Hello. Uh, tell me about your T-shirt, please, what you're wearing. Oh, well, as you'd mentioned, people had been asked to wear red and white or tragically hip and I happened to have this awesome by the numbers um, tragically hip t-shirt that was designed by um, a person who actually just lives around the corner Aaron McGuire and um, anyhow so that's why I'm wearing I'm wearing this yeah. uh, the tragically hip was her favorite band um, uh, sadly um, this is uh, paying tribute to a fallen military member is something you've done before Yes, uh, I had mentioned to you that my husband and I a few weeks ago were up the street to pay um, respects to um, Abigail, um, Sub-Lieutenant Abigail Cobridge. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's sadly become, uh, you know, a common thing that we're doing. There's just been so much sadness um, in this province and across the country. And, uh, you know, we had chatted across the whole world, but it just seems especially tragic here in Nova Scotia and Halifax in particular. Yes, the, the province has been so hard hit. And of course, this is a military town, Halifax is. And so there's, there's a deep sadness. A lot of people are feeling connection to the tragedy. Thank you so much for your time, Paula. You're welcome. Paula Richard here on Almond Street, the funeral procession route. Michael? Elizabeth, thank you. And as you wrap there with Paula along Almond Street in Halifax, we now see the casket carrying Jennifer Casey back home, leaving the military transport plane, the Royal Canadian Air Force plane on which she was carried. It begins now the solemn ceremony of bringing her back home, and Halifax will be her resting place as indicated by her family earlier this week. Let us watch and take in the moment as Halifax and Nova Scotia and the country bring Jennifer Casey back home.
And if you are just joining us, you're watching right now the scene live to us from Stanfield International Airport in Halifax. And this is the homecoming ceremony for Captain Jennifer Casey. Sadly, Captain Casey lost her life last week after the plane she was on, a snowbird's plane, crashed shortly after takeoff. Captain Casey was only 35 years old. You're watching CBC News Network and our special coverage today of the homecoming ceremony and funeral procession for Captain Jennifer, for Captain Jennifer Casey. As you saw there just moments ago, her arrival back in Halifax attended by the Governor General as well as the Defence Minister and that hearse will lead the funeral procession that will wind its way through northern Halifax today and passing by the places that were significant in the life of Captain Casey. And as we watch the scene unfold right now at Robert Stanfield International Airport, I do want to read a bit of the statement that was released by her family on the occasion of her death. They say, Captain Jennifer Casey, our beloved daughter, lost her life on Sunday, May 17th in Kamloops, British Columbia, while supporting an important mission that seemed to be designed for her. Operation Inspiration is a mission with one focus, making Canadians happy in a time of uncertainty, and there was no better person in this world to carry out that mission than Jen. Her beautiful smile and positivity, positively infectious personality could brighten anyone's day, and she proudly served the mission as she flew across our great nation with a team that she adored, the Snowbirds. 
Jennifer was more than a granddaughter, daughter, sister, and friend to many. She was a storyteller, a role that she embraced with passion and skill. She was also a proud Nova Scotian that served as an advocate and ambassador for her province wherever she went. Her journey took her many places, but her heart was always at home in Halifax, and Halifax is now where she has returned as we see now the laying of flowers by those who knew Jennifer best and loved her most, her family and her friends. Now, Captain Casey was a journalist before joining the forces. She joined the Canadian Armed Forces back in 2014 as a public affairs officer. She eventually joined to be the public affairs officer for the Snowbirds, and it was in that capacity that she was traveling with the Snowbirds during Operation Inspiration. And as we say, tragically, her life came to an end last weekend when the plane that she was on crashed shortly after taking off in Kamloops, British Columbia. And there we see now the Governor General, as well as the National Defense Minister, taking part in the homecoming for Captain Casey. And as we watch the scene unfold, I do want to bring onto the program right now a friend of Jennifer Casey, uh, Corinne McClelland, knew her for many years. She she is going to join our program, and unfortunately, we have lost that line, but we will join her when we can. Uh, perhaps then we can bring in Steve Will, who uh, was a commanding officer for the Snowbirds from 2002 to 2004. He joins us right now in Thorndale, Ontario. Steve, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure, Michael. Thank you for having me. We're obviously watching a very somber and such a sad ceremony unfold right now in Halifax as Captain Casey comes back home. Uh, I'm wondering about your thoughts. When you saw the tragedy happen last weekend, what was going through your mind? Well, Michael, I think like any military person, any Canadian actually, that saw the, uh, the tragedy last weekend, um, it was heartbreak, really, uh, and shock. I think a week later now that uh, Jen's uh, going back home, I think that shock for most Canadians and most of her squadron members has just been replaced with a bit of sorrow, a lot of sadness. Um, and maybe that's not really what we should be thinking right now. I think Jen will, would not want that. I think her family's statement that you just read was very eloquent and I think it summed up what most people that wear the uniform for Canada, the way that we mostly look at our mission and our and our life, it's an honor to serve Canadians. And Op Inspiration was, was Jen's brainchild. She was doing what she was meant to do and I believe that she would want us now to look back at her life and her career and her mission with a smile. Um, perhaps rather than sadness, I think Jen would rather us put on a, one of the classic hip songs and perhaps raise a toast to her memory. Well, you know, you raise a very poignant point because her family did ask those that would take part in today's procession in Halifax to either wear red and white in honor of the snowbirds or to wear something uh, that reminded them of the tragically hip, which was apparently Jen, Jen's favorite band. Uh, talk to us about this moment for military families though, because as you say, it is one of those difficult parts in life where you are mourning the loss of someone that you cared about, but also trying to honor their memory. Well, it certainly is. Uh, that's the case. And, and for soldiers, sailors, airmen, 
we know that this is a it's a possibility every everyone who puts on the uniform knows that um, that the ultimate sacrifice is a possibility in this in this job uh, the snowbirds is made up of volunteers from all walks of aviation within the Air Force uh, it's not a permanent job it's a it's a volunteer job for a few years and then you tend to go back to your normal squadrons uh, all of us on squadrons have had this day we've we've uh, we've seen our comrades fall and we've had to deal with this. It doesn't make it any easier. It, it is a very sad day, not just for the snowbirds, but for all mm -hmm. military men and women. I, I think the snowbird well, it, it transitions and it transcends an actual military unit. I think most Canadians look at the snowbirds and they, they consider the snowbirds to be Canada's team. Uh, and I think a, a tragedy like this hits home even um, even more poignantly for Canadians than, than perhaps others do. Um, I can't help but think of, of the outpouring of, of affection and, and respect that uh, we saw years ago along on the Highway of Heroes. And I, and I think you're seeing the same thing today for Jen. I, I think it's very appropriate. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you've had a, an opportunity to, to speak with those who have served with the Snowbirds in the past. As you say, a voluntary uh, mission for, for those that are part of the team. What kind of reaction, what kind of words are you hearing from them in this moment? Uh, as you say, a loss for the squadron, but also a loss for the country. Well, certainly, it, when something like this happens, and, and once a Snowbird, always a Snowbird, uh, the phone starts ringing right away, and uh, I, I, yes, the short answer is yes, I've been in contact with many of the former Snowbirds, um, wingmen that, that when I was on the team as a wingman in 89 and 90, that's a long time ago, we all keep in touch. Uh, all of my wingmen when I was a commanding officer, we, we still keep in very close touch. So of course we, uh, we do get together, um, you know, on the phone when something like this happens. And then of course, the serving members of the squadron, uh, once you're a CEO of the squadron, you never really lose touch of the squadron. So we've all been talking back and forth. And I can honestly say that the focus right now is, is, is very much on, on Jen and her family and doing the right thing for them, uh, affording her the proper respect and honors that, that she deserves. Um, and, uh, you know, along with that sense of loss, that sense of purpose really keeps people um, keep people going in a time like this. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned the eloquence of the family in the statement that they that they released. I'm wondering what you think about them because I, as I heard that statement early this week, I I was so impressed that they could put together such words in such a time of sorrow and difficulty for them. I, I think it's uh, it honors Jen's memory. I I saw Jen's mom on the. Uh, TV a, a few days ago. I think she, uh, her statements and her composure. She's she's a very eloquent eloquent lady, and uh, I just can't say enough for for the message that she's put out. And and I think it comes from her heart. And and I, I think that underlying message uh, is the same from her. That that you know amidst this tragedy, uh, there are you know there are always are some glimmers in any tragedy. And and in this case, her daughter was doing what she loved. Um, many people don't get to that level in, in life that, that don't have that dream uh, and actually get out there and, and live it. Uh, and and doing, uh, doing her job in the Snowbirds, I, I know when I saw Jen before, and I've only met her very briefly before, but you could tell that she exuded that, that pride in her uniform and the pride in the Snowbirds. And I think that shines through in her mother's statements. I, I, I just couldn't think of... Uh, uh, more eloquent and more appropriate words to be said about Jen. Well, you know, I want to share with you a line from the full statement from the family, and this actually has to do with the Snowbirds, in which they say, we share her loss with the Canadian Forces Snowbirds 431 Air Demonstration Squadron, a team that she proudly served and a job she truly loved. Our hearts are full with all of you at this time as we mourn the loss of Jen and remember all of the memories we shared with her. So clearly the family wanted to, to, to make note of the Snowbirds and just how important it was for Jen to be serving with the squadron. I agree. And you know what, I, th I think that it is not lost on Canadians that the Snowbirds were crisscrossing the country. They started out east and were moving to the west coast. 
uh, as a salute to Canadians. And, and, and as I said before, people believe this is Canada's team, and I believe it too. And, and that thank you that they were giving to Canadian citizens for doing their job during the pandemic, that's a, that's a big deal to a lot of Canadians. And I think that they realize, you know, the, the brainchild of, of Jen was, uh, it was a wonderful thing. And it was a wonderful gesture from the, uh, from the Air Force and the basically Canadian government uh, to salute their own citizens in, in doing a great job. And Jen was right behind that. Uh, so I, 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 I don't think that's lost on, on Canadians. And I think that's really why you see such a huge outpouring of emotion and support for both Jen, the family, and the Snowbirds right now. Steve, I want to thank you for the time. Uh, perhaps we will speak again before the hour is out. But right now, thank you for this. My pleasure, Michael. Thank you for having me. And as we take one more look at Stanfield Airport in Halifax, we can see the procession is beginning to leave the tarmac. It will, as we say, make its way through the city of Halifax, passing areas that were important to Jennifer Casey in her life. And with that, we want to now invite to the program Corinne McClellan. She was a friend of Jennifer Casey's, a friend for some 16 years. She joins us right now by phone from Halifax. Corinne, thank you for joining us at what must be such a difficult time. It is, Michael. Yes, very, very difficult day here in Halifax. Can you share with us what you're feeling right now? What's going through your mind as you see Jennifer making her way back home? It's a strange combination of, uh, I mean, obviously sadness and grief, but just tremendous pride. We are so very proud of Captain Jennifer Casey. Um, and we see it today. I mean, I see it, I saw it, and I'm now just not far from where she grew up. There's a, a growing uh, group of people who are here to pay tribute to her as the, uh, as the procession makes its way through, everybody dressed in red and white uh, to honor her and her beloved uh, snowbirds. Um, you know, it is, uh, I think it's just disbelief. I think that's where a lot of people uh, find themselves. But I know for myself, uh, knowing her uh, as I did, I um, just, i always so, so proud of her. And uh, on this day, just very sad and, uh, and missing her. Mm -hmm. uh, missing her in part because she, she died so tragically and so quickly and unexpectedly. Where were you last Sunday when the plane crash happened? I was just home with my family, and uh, and actually we have, you know, Jen and I. I mean, we I, we certainly had, you know, lots of mutual acquaintances, but we also I also knew uh, some of her extended family, and so uh, we were notified in in that way. And uh, I mean, I just had the wind, uh, I think, pulled out of my lungs. I, I I really couldn't. I just didn't believe it. I didn't want to believe it. I you know kind of kept checking and. You know, having the confirmation through through family was, um, you know, I mean, an obvious confirmation, but uh, just devastating. And what has this past week been like for you? You say that you were in disbelief when you first heard the news. As the days pass, what has this last week been like? I think it's the the same thing that uh, you know everybody feels. And you want to just wake up from this this nightmare. You know, the the irony of this whole thing is that uh, Jen so. Uh, humble. I mean, for all that she accomplished in her life, I mean, she just never had an, an ego that would match, you know, her accomplishments. And so this outpouring of, you know, of love, I mean, it, she would be, uh, you know, she would be very humbled by it. But um, I think she would probably be in some ways surprised, which, you know, would never surprise anybody else to, to see this, this honor for uh, a Canadian hero. And, um, I guess as the, as the days uh, you know sort of have gone on, um, I, it's sinking in. There's no question about it. Um, you know, and uh, and the sadness certainly is you know over overcoming mm -hmm. as the days days go go by. Um, I will say that uh, as a, a person who's an honorary lieutenant colonel in uh, in our forces. And also, um, you know, someone who is uh, a part of a regiment that is Halifax's namesake, to be able to, to pay tribute to her and read the family statement this week was one of the greatest honors of my life. Um, and that couldn't have been easy. It was the most difficult thing I have ever done. However, Jen never stepped away from a challenge in her life, and there was not 
a second in my mind that told me that I would not do that. So it was, uh, it was very important, um, very difficult, but uh, I know that uh, as a very proud service member, she would have wanted me to, uh, to be strong. And uh, that's, uh, that's just a, a feature and a character of, of service. And uh, she had that in spades. You know, uh, just before you, we were speaking uh, to Steve Will, who was a former commanding officer with the Snowbirds, and he said as tragic as today is and as difficult as today is, today is also one of those opportunities to, to really lift Jennifer's memory and to, to think back at all that she accomplished and all that she did to create positivity in people's life, a, a statement that was in fact, a, a word rather, that was used in the statement that you read uh, earlier in the week. Uh, you know, as we think about your friendship with her, how did you and Jennifer actually first meet? We met when she was a student. Actually, she was a she was a journalism student, and uh, you know, she's just a shining star. You know, from the minute that you, you know, you have a conversation with her, um, you know, you just know that this is you know the the one to watch. Uh, you just know that she's gonna she's gonna take flight. You know, <laughs> and certainly she did. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I pride is the word that comes to mind over and over again. And when I think of, uh, you know, we had a brief exchange when Operation Inspiration was announced, and uh, you know, I mean, I just thought how perfect, um, you know, that Jen would be, you know, not only a part of that, but you know, sort of spreading that message across Canada um, because it just was so, you know, characteristic of her. She was inspirational. She was. She was bright. Uh, she just exuded uh, happiness. She just was a positive person um, with, an, with an, a unique sense of civic duty. I mean, even in her 20s, um, she had a commitment to community that was just uncanny. You know, I mean, she, you know, uh, supported, um, you know, animal shelters. She volunteered for food banks. She volunteered at, even when she, you know, was you know gainfully employed as a, and working in the field. She still found time to volunteer for events that I would be, you know, organizing or working on. I mean, she just had a really, um, I, I would say, unmatched uh, dedication to community. And uh, for her to be in a role as she was as a service member, I mean, just. It's not, uh, not a surprise to me, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Well, you know, I was struck as people recollect uh, all that they knew and the memories that they shared of Jennifer Casey. One, one of the things that stuck out to me was that she joined the forces because she wanted to make a positive change in people's lives. Yeah, yeah. She, um, she was that person. Um, she absolutely was that person who, it was almost like she was blind to stations of life. Um, it did not matter, uh, you know, where you fell on the spectrum of, you know, economic scale or profile or whatever. If, you, if she was, you know, helping to tell your story or she was just, you know, volunteering to help an organization that you might be affiliated with, you were the, her central focus. And that's what made her um, so good at what she did. Mm -hmm. The other thing that strikes me about Jennifer, and you know, even though she was a broadcaster for a time, I sadly I only knew of her after last week's tragedy. But in every photo, she has this wonderful smile, and, and people keep talking about how that is what they're going to remember of her. This yeah. beautiful smile that she had it seemed in just about every moment of her life. It was her signature. Absolutely, it was her signature. Um, you know, it would be a, a very rare occasion that you would not see Captain Jennifer Casey with a smile on her face. Um, she just was uh, was that person. And I, I, it was kind of a profound um, thing about her that she just was able to be so positive all the time. And I mean, there were lots of times in places that we volunteered where there would not be, let's say, great weather. <laughs> we, we do live in the Maritimes or, or there would be, you know, sort of, you know, uh, time crunches and things like that and she just was that person who never never cracked or snapped or she just wasn't she just I don't, I don't even think it was in her DNA she just was <laughs> one of those people who just you know knew how to um, punch through and she knew how to carry other people through and mm -hmm. uh, you know I think that's it just is so unique to her yeah 
uh, Steve Will was, was commenting on the eloquence of the statement that you read from the family. Uh, and I'm wondering how difficult was that for the family to put together? They, they put, such, put together such a beautiful memorial of all that she accomplished and all that she uh, stood for in her life. But that can't have been such an easy moment for them just days after her death. It absolutely is not. Um, you know, I mean, these are these are very difficult times. Um, but they are they are strong. They're a strong family, and uh, they are supporting one another. Um, they are, uh, you know, they're proud Nova Scotians, and they're proud of their they're proud of her and all that she accomplished. Um, but the the, the statement uh, was one hundred percent how they feel about. Um, you know all that she's done but her, her character and how it, it just it affected so many people i don't think i think she just would be so surprised to see you know the, the this outpouring of, of love because it would never be something that she would um i don't want to say expect but it wouldn't be something that she would um think was necessary she wouldn't see it would be deemed necessary because she was so humble it's just uh it's just who she was mm -hmm. How do you want people to remember her across the country? She died serving this country, trying to inspire this country. How do you want people to remember her? I think all Canadians should remember Captain Jennifer Casey as a Canadian hero. Well said. Corinne McClellan, I am so sorry for your loss, but I thank you for the time. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Well, as we continue our special coverage today of the homecoming and the funeral procession for Captain Jennifer Casey, we now want to go back to Elizabeth Chu. She is in Halifax along uh, a street, Almond Street, which is a part of the procession route. Uh, Elizabeth, take us through the route itself. What exactly uh, or where exactly will it pass in the city? And talk to us about the significance as it uh, unfolds through uh, this afternoon. Well, Michael, I am on Almond Street. As you mentioned, the funeral procession will be coming down the street. I've been here all afternoon, and people are starting to gather on the street to pay their respects to Captain Jen Casey, who grew up on the street. Now, as you can see, there is a, a military serviceman. He is wearing his black dress uniform and wearing a mask because, of course, we are in the middle of a pandemic and it is so difficult to grieve right now. Further down the street you can see people wearing red and white. Those are the colors of the snowbirds which Captain Jen Casey's family has requested people wear those colors to show their solidarity for the snowbirds and also as a way to express their sympathies. The procession will be coming down the street and this is a neighborhood of great significance to Captain Casey. This is where her childhood home was. Not very far away is the school that she attended where her friends from childhood are deeply hurt. Uh, the Highland Park crew, as they were known. Also just a few blocks away from here is the radio station where Captain Casey worked as a journalist at News 95.7 before she became a public affairs officer with the Snowbirds. During, during the funeral procession, the governor general, the defense minister will be driving by along with Captain Casey's parents, her grandparents and her partner, uh, fellow snowbird Scott Boyd. They are deeply in mourning and this city, especially North End Halifax, is mourning with them. Michael? Elizabeth, thank you for that. We'll speak again, our Elizabeth Chu, along the funeral procession in Halifax. Well, we now want to bring on to the program Tim Durkin. He met Captain Jennifer Casey when she moved to CFB Trenton and got a job at a radio station in town. He joins us right now from Trenton, Ontario. So, Tim, thank you for joining us today. Michael, I had to wear as much red as possible. It was her favorite team. She knew I was cheering for the Ottawa Senators, but she was a Montreal Canadiens fan, so I dug out one of my old sweaters just for her. It was one of the biggest parts of her life was she was so competitive in sports. She loved playing hockey. She loved the Montreal Canadiens. She loved the tragically hip. And then to, 
top off her life being a snowbird, I don't think you can get much more Canadian than Captain Casey. Yeah, and appropriate that you are red, wearing red and white because that is uh, what the family is asking mourners, as we heard from Elizabeth, uh, to do today in honour of the snowbirds, but in your case, of the Canadians for your, your lost friend. You know, Tim, uh, take us back. How and when did you actually meet Jennifer? <laughs> It was 2013. Her partner at the time and her had been uh, posted Trenton. And of course, she had the journalism background. So she was looking to work uh, in radio. And she, she came to Quinney News and Rock 107 and talked to our uh, program director, Sean Kelly, and said, If you have anything, you know, I'm, I'm not too bad at this stuff. She was very humble about it. She never bragged. And uh, we saw how talented she was, how good she was. She jumped right into the community and became a great part of the newsroom with uh, with David and Nicole and, and John and Jack and everybody else. But you think about somebody that, that is able to go and take up their life and go somewhere else. It's not an easy thing to do. But she was able to do that, but she still kept Nova Scotia with her. She came into Canadian Forces Base Trenton after, after leaving uh, journalism. She excelled at that. She excelled with the demo team, the CF-18 demo team. And then Operation Inspiration, I understand that was that was her brainchild and there was a group of people, but uh, to see that we have to remember that no matter what happens, they were trying to bring hope and inspiration to people coast to coast to coast. Mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, you mentioned all her accomplishments and one of the, her greatest accomplishments seems to be the person that she was because everyone comments on just how positive she was, the smile that she had on her face. How do you remember Jennifer? Uh, the last time we spoke, uh, they were part of Operation Inspiration over the Quinty region, and I had sent her a message about having a social distance craft beer or two if she was able to do so. But she said, we're kind of sequestered as we do this trip, and she wished, uh, wished my wife a happy birthday and asked to hug our little daughter for her, and that was the last time we had talked. But the fact is, is that everything she did, she did with a sense of pride. You see those photos that have been circling online and through CBC and through the outlets, you see how happy she was. There was a sense of accomplishment and pride in what she did. And considering she was only in the military from 2014 on, for her to be able to do what she did, become captain and then a public affairs officer in some pretty major, uh, you know, the biggest air base in the country, the demo team, and then the Snowbirds, that's that's quite the accomplishment for a career, let alone a few years. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, for people that don't know, Trenton is, of course, where CFB Trenton is. It's a military town. Uh, this tragedy ha has struck a chord with all Canadians uh, and, and certainly within the military community. As a morning host for your radio station, I'm wondering what you are hearing from people around you regarding the tragedy. I think a lot of people were, were blown away, but when... Uh, when the morning show host Buzz and I were, were talking to people on the phone or through social media channels, Michael, they were just sharing, uh, you know, the one time that they ran into her at an event, but it lasted with them because of the type of person that she was. There was other people that worked with her 40 or 60 hours a week and they had the same memories. She wasn't somebody that was negative or, or talked down to others or was disrespectful. She was always there to to spin a positive on even tough times and of course with the military there can be those tough times but she made sure that in those tough times we found the positive and that's how we remembered operation inspiration and there was thousands of people around canadian which is based trenton when captain casey and the snowbirds flew over here uh just uh, two weeks ago and that's something that i think people are going to remember forever in this area mm -hmm. and how about you how will you remember her uh I think I'll I'll remember the the time sitting around a bonfire in Trenton with her. Uh, the last time I saw her in person was was down in Halifax, at a couple of the pubs when I was there for a convention. And no matter if it was ten minutes or, or two days you spent with her, she always left you uh, a little bit better than you were before. And I'll remember those times, those laughs, uh, that smile, but, but the passion for what she did. Tim, I am so sorry for the loss of your friend, but thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Michael, thank you for, for honoring her and doing what you guys are doing. You're welcome. That is Tim Durkin, a friend of Jennifer Casey in Trenton, Ontario. Well, the Governor General Julie Payette was at today's ceremony as they welcomed the casket of Captain Jennifer Casey and brought her back home. Julie Payette did speak with reporters just a short time after that homecoming ceremony. Take a listen to what she had to say. It's one of those tributes that, need, that, that are so important for the team, 
for the uh, forces and for us all, really, to pay tribute uh, our men and women in uniform. They serve our country. And even if uh, there are accidents, they do uh, a risky job. Uh, we need to pay this tribute, and uh, I am just so proud to be here for Jen Casey. You, I know, have a personal affinity for this program uh, and, and this uh, snowboard aircraft. Um, what did you think when you first heard this news? I know you had a statement, but, but your own personal feelings when you were advised of this crash. Well, I have several hours as a pilot on the uh, on the snowbird and uh, aircraft, the tutor, and we know very well that the worst thing that we're to have a problem with an airplane is right at takeoff. When you are taking off, you're low and slow, and that's exactly what happened there. And uh, and uh, it, it, uh, you know they did everything they could. Uh, so I, I felt so bad well, for this. Seconds when the pilot is trying to get higher to figure out what to do next. That must have been home for you, seeing that video. Well, I was, uh, you see, it's, a, it's not my first uh, tragedy uh, of the sort. I, I'm an astronaut, and we lost the space shuttle Columbia. Uh, accidents happen, and no matter how we train, we know that there are risky parts within this job, and that's why I'm so proud of them. And I hope they go flying. And, and the fact that uh, this happened during Operation Inspiration, where they were going around cheering us, Canadian, is, uh, is even more touching. And again, that was the Governor General Julie Payette speaking with reporters at Stanfield International Airport in Halifax just minutes after the procession left the airport, the homecoming for Captain Jennifer Casey. And with that, I'm showing you now the scene in Halifax as people begin to line the route. The procession itself will be making its way mainly through northern Halifax, passing areas and points of the city that were important to Jennifer Casey in her life. And as we talk about the procession, we want to show you a, a bit of a vantage point uh, of what is happening right now, because this is the procession as it makes its way from the airport to the city. A bit of a drive between the airport itself and the city, and right along the route, you see there Canadians gathering, waving Canadian flags, also respecting social distancing. And that was an important message in the uh, statement that was read from Jennifer Casey's family this week. They said not only uh, did they want the people who were coming out today to wear red and white in honor of the snowbirds, but they were also asking them to respect social distancing, reminding them that uh, Operation Inspiration, that was in part the brainchild of Jennifer Casey, was meant to inspire Canadians in this moment of COVID-19, and they did not want the fight against that disease to be stopped because of the funeral procession for their daughter. But here you see now this vantage point as the cars and the vehicles carrying the body of Jennifer Casey, makes its way to the city of Halifax, They uh, leaving the airport again, a fair drive between the city and the airport itself. And with that, we want to bring back to the program Steve Will. He is a forming, former commanding officer for the Snowbirds between 2002 and 2004. He joins us right now in Thordale, Ontario. You know, Steve, uh, since you and I spoke, uh, you've now been able to see the, the images of people coming out, uh, going to the street, standing there, red and white, waving the Canadian flag. Uh, as a member, former member of the Snowbirds, uh, what does that do to you when you see that? Well, in a, in a tragic situation and in a tragic event, it, it, it warms the heart. It really does to see these Canadians come out to support not only Jen, but the, but the team and, and the Canadian forces uh, as a whole. It means a lot to us. It means a lot to Jen's family. And um, just on that note, if I can just say a, a quick, uh, another quick thing. I, I've, I've had a, a, a few minutes here to really think about what we talked about earlier about mm -hmm. uh, by all means. Uh, about the eloquence of Jen's family and how they how they really stood up for this, and I just want to point something out that if the family would have requested a very private um, ceremony and repatriation of Jen, they would have they would have received that. And and I th I think it's it's one more kudo to the family to allow Canada um, to welcome Jen home uh, and to grieve with them. Uh, and I, I can say that we would have respected their wishes if they wanted things to stay very private. So I just can't say enough about her family and, and, and about the support that, 
that they've given everyone on this. Uh, my, my hat's off to them. Well, you know, it really underlines the point that you were making as well in our earlier conversation where you said, you know, the Snowbirds are, are not just part of a military family. They are part of the Canadian family because Canadians do see them as a symbol of this country. So, so perhaps that is a nod for the, for the national mourning that is happening today at the loss of Jennifer's life. You're right, Michael, and it, and it is true. When I, I've, I've been across Canada, I've, I've been to every every city, small and large in Canada, with the Snowbird uniform on, flying those jets, and we are welcome to open arms everywhere in Canada. No more so uh, than in Halifax, I can say, one of our favorite, uh, favorite spots in all of Canada. Um, you know, the Eastern culture, the Eastern people always welcome the, uh, the team. Uh, we always felt very at home in Halifax and, uh, you know, it, that even makes it more, more difficult for me actually in some ways to see Jen going home there. I have such fond memories of, of flying the east coast of Canada and, and spending time in Halifax through, uh, through my entire military career actually. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when the Governor General was speaking, I wonder what went through your mind because here, as she noted, this is not the first tragedy that she's had to live through. She, of course, a former astronaut before becoming a Governor General, and she saw the Space Shuttle's Columbia. She has had comrades die in action. How important was it to hear those words from the Governor General? Well, Julie and I have known each other for, for quite a long time and, and absolutely correct. And when she said she has time in the tutor, uh, she was always a great supporter of the uh, of the military. Being a, an astronaut, she visited us up in Cold Lake when I was flying F-18s up there uh, on various occasions. Uh, she is a, she's a great representative uh, of the aviation community. And she's she's right. We've all dealt with this. We've, we've all been in this situation before. And I think her words uh, were very appropriate. You look at it almost with two different, uh, two different eyes. Uh, the one uh, where you can't help having your heart break when you watch it. And then the other one as a, as a pilot and, then, and those of us that have flown jets our entire lives, we, we look at it more uh, in, perhaps in an analytical way and, and we really understand uh, what they were going through as a crew, uh, the time critical scenario that they were in um, the decisions that had to be made very, very quickly. And, and unfortunately, as, as Julie said, and she, she is correct, there is no worse place for something like this to happen. Having said that, uh, I think the, uh, they did the best that they, they possibly could in this, in this scenario. Uh, and uh, it's unfortunate, but, but sometimes these scenarios happen. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the Governor General also talked about rudder issues being at the heart of the tragedy. Uh, can you explain that to our viewers? I'm sorry, you'd have to re repeat that. I'm, I'm sorry. She was talking about rudder issues with the plane as perhaps being part of the issue with, with the crash. Well, I, I didn't catch that uh, from her, and uh, I, 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 I haven't heard of that uh, in relation to this crash at all and, um, or in any event uh, with, with the tutor. So maybe she, she, she may have uh, been misquoted on that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as this is happening right now, I wonder what it means for other members of the Snowbirds. Uh, the, 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 of course, a squadron that has now lost one member and also another member who was injured, the pilot of that plane. What does it do to a squadron to experience something like this? Well, the squadron itself, it, it's a very tight-knit unit and a very uh, tight-knit family. Uh, as their commanding officer, Mike French, uh, mentioned on the news a, a few days ago, uh, they have very specific priorities on the squadron, and the safety of the of spectators and Canadian uh, public is, is number one, actually. And then right after that is the, uh, the safety and the well-being of their own people. So I can guarantee you what they're doing right now is, is they're embracing their family. They're taking care of Jen and Jen's family, first of all. And then they will, uh, they will retreat for a while as they need to. Uh, two things need to happen. The accident investigation needs to continue, uh, and it will at its own pace. Uh, and they also need to regroup, and they, and they need to do that behind uh, closed doors. That needs to be respected. And uh, they, they need time to themselves to sort through a whole bunch of things, uh, you know, technically and emotionally that are going on right now. They and will come out the other side. Uh, they always they always do and they always will. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I can imagine their thoughts are also with Captain Richard McDougall, who was piloting the plane. 
Now, Rich is uh, Rich is going to be okay, uh, and absolutely right. And that's what I mean by they. After Jen is taken care of, they will take care of their own family. And of course, Rich is 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 primary in that. They'll make sure he's okay. They will take care of him and the, and themselves as a as a team and as a and as a family. Mm -hmm. um, but from everything I've heard, Rich is uh, Rich is going to be okay. Well, that's good news. Listen, Steve, uh, we only have a few minutes left uh, in our coverage today, and as uh, I'm wrapping it up with you, I'm wondering if there are any final words that you would like to share with Canadians across the country. I think on behalf of, of the Snowbirds, especially the past Snowbirds mem members, I would just like to say thank you to all the Canadians that have shown such an outpouring of sympathy uh, for Jen uh, and her family and support for Jen and family uh, and the team, it means a lot to us. It, it means a lot when Canadians stand up for their men and women in uniform. It is not lost on us at all. Uh, I said it before at the beginning of the broadcast, but, but I'll say it again. I, I don't think Jen wants us to shed a tear tonight. I think what I will do tonight is perhaps raise a glass of fine single malt, maybe put on a head by a century or some other classic tra tragically hip song and toast Jen and her legacy with a smile on my face. And I really think that's what she would want. Steve, that is a beautiful tribute. Uh, thank you for sharing that with us and thank you for the time. Thanks for having me. And that is Steve Will. Well, let's now head back to Elizabeth Chu again. She's on Almond Street in Halifax, part of the procession that the hearse and the funeral procession will be taking as they deliver Jennifer Casey to the funeral home. Uh, Elizabeth, we're just a few minutes towards the, the top of the hour. What can you tell us at this point? Well, as you can see behind me, Michael, there are quite a few people gathered here on Almond Street here in North End Halifax, the neighborhood that Captain Jen Casey grew up in. It's where she developed so many friendships and, and developed that thirst for adventure. People here have lined the procession route to pay respects, to pay tribute to Captain Casey. As you can see, there are quite a few people actually wearing red and white, the colors of the snowbirds, which Captain Casey's family requested that people wear to show their support for the snowbirds and as their way to express sympathies for the family. We expect the procession to be coming down the street uh, as well as through a number of streets here in North End Halifax. She grew up on this street and went to a grade school not far from here. Her friends from childhood are in deep mourning tonight. Her friends at Highland Park, they formed very long-lasting friendships. Also not far from here is the radio station where Captain Jen Casey worked as a journalist at uh, News 95.7 before she became a public affairs officer for the Snowbirds. All of these places very significant in the life of Captain Jen Casey. A great many Haligonians will want to express their sympathy to the family, Michael. Mm -hmm. And expressing not only sympathy to the family, but also thanks, because here we have a person and guest after guest today remarking at just how inspirational she was, how she wanted to affect positive change in people's life, and how she wanted to make a difference uh, with her time, not only uh, previously as a broadcaster, but also with the armed forces. Yes, and tragically, she died during service to her country during Operation Inspiration, which was designed to lift the spirits of Canadians during the pandemic. And as her family was, has said, it seemed to be a mission that was designed for Captain Jen Casey because she had that positivity. She had that smile that uh, lit up uh, the room. And so we can expect that so many people will be lining the procession route to express their sympathy because there's really no other way to uh, grieve during a pandemic. There will be no large funeral. So people will be standing here uh, paying tribute. And one of those people is retired Navy Chief Petty Officer Second Class, Jeff Murphy. And uh, hello, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, tell me why you wanted to come out here today. Uh, we just needed to be here uh, like everyone else. Um, my wife and I, Maddie, we just, uh, we've been out of the military for about six years after 25 years of service and uh, 
uh, when your brothers and sisters are mourning the loss of one, um, you can't just watch it on TV. You got to be here and uh, just be there with her and connect with her. And uh, we just want the, the family to know. I uh, hope they see us and that um, you know we respect the service she gave and the price she paid. And um, she's just a beautiful woman, and she'll be missed by everyone. Yes, my condolences on the loss of uh, part of the military family. How will you express your sympathies and uh, support to the family? Um, we're going to want to show our colors. We'll show our flag and let her family see it and um, salute her as she goes by and pay our respects uh, one last time. Thank you very much. Thanks. That was retired Chief Petty Officer Second Class Jeff Murphy. Michael? Elizabeth, thank you for that. Our Elizabeth Chu in Halifax. Now, as we leave, Elizabeth, we want to show you another look as Haligonians come together right now. Many of them starting to gather as they pay tribute to Captain Jennifer Casey, her homecoming. We saw at the top of the hour as the military transport plane carrying her landed at Stanfield International Airport. Now the airport itself is about a 40 kilometer, kilometer drive into the city, so a bit of a distance. So as we go from this shot, where as you can see people are starting to gather, we want to show you now the procession itself. And earlier as that procession was leaving the airport, even along the highway, we saw many Canadians coming together wearing red and white as requested by the family in honor of the snowbirds. Some wearing Star Wars paraphernalia, which Jennifer Casey appreciated in life. Others wearing t-shirts for the Tragically Hip, which was Jennifer Casey's favorite band. But Jennifer Casey is now back home and this procession will make its way through Northern Halifax, passing the many places that were important to her in her life. As one person we spoke to today said, they want Canadians to remember Captain Jennifer Casey as a hero who affected change and positivity in the life of Canadians.